All right, we are now live. This is the Life Enthusiast online radio, TV, and lab network. I'm Scott Patton. He's Mark Batella, the health coach. We're here restoring vitality to you and to the planet. Today's exciting show is about hemp oil. And this is in particular for our fibromyalgia support group where they've been going crazy over the last couple of days because some people have actually, their pain went down and nobody can believe it. So Martin, I've taken a, a quick uh, survey of the members and they came up with a number of questions that they were asking over and over again. And I thought I would just ram through these questions quickly and then we can uh, see what else you want to add to it and then open it up afterwards for discussion. So if you have questions, hang on to them because we're going to give you an opportunity if you want to actually join us live and ask the questions or you can put it in the sidebar and uh, I'll be reading them. Yeah, it's there for me. <laughs> <laughs> in the sidebar, wherever it is, and uh, we'll go. So the first question I want to ask is, this hemp oil, by the way, is not hemp seed oil that you can get in the grocery stores. This is made from the plant. And uh, is it addictive? Um, no more than breathing. I enjoy breathing and I'm addicted to oxygen. But <laughs> I could give it up. All right. Uh, so, so compared to, say, smoking, it's non-addictive. No, it's not. Yeah, I shouldn't be so flippant. It's uh, truly not addictive. There okay. is nothing in here, in this example bottle, that is not already made by your own body. What's in here is CBD, cannabidiol, and there is an endocannabinoid system in your own body. There are receptors and there is natural CBD being made in your own body. It's just not enough of it. Okay, so compared to, say, cigarettes, which have nicotine, which is highly addictive, this has nothing like that. Correct. Okay, so can it make you high? Uh, no. Unfortunately, there is no THC. We're not able to send it to you. That's the part that has to be removed for it to be legal for us to ship it across state lines. Therefore, none. Okay, so when we're talking about marijuana, cannabis, hemp, all different languages word for the same plant, uh, when people are smoking pot and everything else, they get high, and that high comes from the THC. Tetrahydrocannabinoid. Okay, not the CBD. Right. Okay, great. So um, let's change it. Okay, so that's basically it. It's not addictive. It doesn't get you high. Great. So I, I don't even want to ask why the government has a problem with it. But what I will ask is, uh, is it available overseas? So if I'm in the U UK, for example, can I get it? Yes. This, for instance, is a brand called Endoka. It's manufactured in Denmark, and they ship it throughout the EU. So as long as the crazy Brits don't quit the EU in a month, uh, they have own access to this. Okay. So what about Australia? And I hate to do this to my friends in New Zealand, but I'm going to put you both together, Australia and New Zealand. Well, they're not in it together. They're separate. We have shipped to Australia, and uh, some of it got rejected, and some of it got accepted. So I think it just depends on who the clerk that's processing the shipment is. I suspect that the CBD is not legal and the hemp oil is legal. But here's what we need to explain, okay? Okay. Straight bar explanation. The plant hemp has been on the planet for a long, long time. Many cultures have used it. It made sailing possible. Hemp rope and hemp sailcloth were the two main materials of the sailing ships that made it possible for the Brits to get to Australia and New Zealand and uh, Hawaii. Oh, America. And so back in the 1930s and 40s, the industrialists, in the name of the inventor of nylon, that was Neymar de Dupont, yeah, that one, got together with Hearst, who had interest in paper and who didn't want to be using hemp paper. He wanted to use spruce and pine paper from his forestry holdings. They got together and through their political influence, wouldn't you know, we have the best government money can buy. Uh, they 
got hemp to be banned. So full circle, the natural components of hemp, industrial hemp, is legal. So, so long as stuff is made from the stalk and not the leaf and the bud of the hemp plant, I'm able to import it into the United States and send it to other countries. Hence, and in the United States, is there any state where you have a problem shipping it? No, there is not. Okay. Um, so once you have the industrial hemp in the can, you can treat it the same way as hemp rope or hemp cloth or hemp oil that's extracted from the seed of the plant, which is just a basic salad oil, or the hemp protein powder, which is added to many breakfast protein powders readily available. So, but the hemp seed and the hemp protein are not, uh, they're not full of CBD. Oh, no, but they are also not full of THC. Right. Okay. They cool. both have trace amount of both. So the CBD is extracted from the body of the hemp plant using the same method that you would use to extract, say, lavender oil from the body of the lavender plant. Mm. It should be called the essential oil of hemp, unlike the salad oil from hemp seed. Okay. All right. So, and obviously well, Canada... And you ask Australia. So when we ship it and call it hemp oil, it gets through. When we make big noise about there being CBD in it, it seems to be blocked. Okay. So we just send it and call it hemp oil. We're not All right. Lying. So from the perspective of a customer in Melbourne or Sydney or someplace in Australia or New Zealand, they go to remarkablehealth.com, they purchase it, you ship it. Remarkablerecovery.com. Sorry, remarkablerecovery.com. I even have the site up here and I missed it. Um, they ship it for some whatever reason, it gets returned, then you just give them a refund or you try to ship it again. Yes, I've done both. Okay. So in other words, there's no risk to trying. Well, there is a bit of risk of shipping money, but we're willing to put our neck out. And the custom guys are not going to come down on the poor little person that ordered no, it. There's, there's no downside other than it takes a long time to get in, out, and back. Right. Okay, cool. So that answered my question, what happens if it's not allowed? So let's get into kind of a little bit about how the, how it works. Like, does the CBD or the hemp oil help with pain? The answer is yes, because it gets onto the endocannabinoid receptors, which are the receptors for pain. And uh, so how does it affect them? I... <laughs> metaphor a, <laughs> a lock and a key <laughs> this okay. could be misinterpreted but that's how it goes there's this receptacle waiting for this to arrive and the, if it doesn't arrive we feel pain no when it arrives it goes we, unexcited we're, we're feel it's you know so it's sort of vibrating it's all excited and that to us is ouch yes and then the stuff comes in and it just calm down Calm okay. down. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, yeah. I should have lay down, puppy. Lay down, puppy. <laughs> oh, it goes. Okay, so it's like all excited. The monkey's <laughs> all excited, and it's like it's okay. It's okay. I actually um, ran into a monkey in Southeast Asia like thirty years ago, and uh, he was he grabbed on and he wouldn't let go. He wouldn't let go. So I'm holding, right, and then. If you and they said just stroke him right between the you know on the forehead right between the eyes and he'd fall asleep so I did that and he'd fall asleep and then I try to let him down and he'd wake up and get all excited again so I'd fall asleep then finally I just dropped him and, ran. and got and ran but so that's what happens is we've got this pain and the pain is because we have these receptors that are very very excited yes and then what this does is it it calms them down thereby stopping the relieving some of the pain. I won't say it stops the pain. Well, essentially, yes. When you uh, flip the switch on a um, light fixture, it goes out like that. So you just okay. need to flip enough of the switches to turn off the pain. And it does work. It works very quickly. Like it's, you know, here's an example of it. This is a typical example. This one is in glycerin. 
you squeeze this thing, you, uh, it's child proof actually, this is about five drops, put it in your mouth and hold it there, don't swallow it, just leave it under your tongue and it will absorb through the buccal tissues of your mouth. Okay. After a while, it just spreads throughout your system, throughout your body, and um, and peace ensues. So, for instance, I would take this when I'm all, uh, what's the word, OCD, obsessing about something. Let's just say that somebody really got to me under my skin, pissed me off about something, and I'm just stewing about it. Three minutes after I take a dose, it's, ah, eh, no big deal. What can I say? This is not a life-ending affair. We'll get over this. So this is peace in the bottle. I suppose, yeah. Okay. So let's move on to the next part, which is inflammation. So a lot of times the pain that we come from comes from inflammation in our joints. Our you know, arthritis is inflammation in right. the joints. Does it impact that inflammation? Now, obviously, mm -hmm. from what you said, it impacts the pain that I feel from the inflammation, will it actually help me to get rid of the inflammation? So let's uh, unpack what that is. So inflammation is stimulated by the signaling molecule called histamine, which is released and causes the body to start trying to repair the damage. You know, you hit yourself, you start swelling and redness and heat are the symptoms that go with it okay if you have a micro injury it's as if you hit yourself with a very tiny hammer all over your body so you have many sites that are pain redness swelling and heat and like the micro is like it's constantly hitting yes right like yeah. it's, as opposed to just whacking myself once out you know and a couple of days later it's sort of gone what i'm doing is i'm whacking myself constantly all over the place Every time I eat something that is the wrong thing, it causes the, uh, the wrong reaction. Okay. So when we take this, it helps to calm down the histamine release. Therefore, the fire never happens. So the inflammation fire is just not happening. So over time, you will need less and less of this because you will have less and less reason to take it. Mm, okay. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think about how else to say it. It's There will be less of the inflammation because you will prevent the reason for the inflammation signals to come out. Okay, so Outside the next... Pardon? No sirens, the truck is not leaving the uh, fire station. Okay, and I thought it was interesting, like after a while, you're going to need less and less, which brings me to, of course, the first question is, is how much do I need to begin if I'm in, and I guess, obviously, that's an unanswerable question because what is my pain level? What is my, you know, what are the, where where am I on scales of one to 10 and everything else? Yeah. But uh, so how would you, how would I, having no clue at all about hemp oil and everything else, I say, okay, you know, I have pain in my body or I have general mm -hmm. chronic pain. Um, what am I going to, where am I going to start? So you can manage this the same way as you would manage thirst. You take a drink of something like water and you're no longer thirsty. And then after a while you feel thirsty, which is the signal for I need Drinking more water. water. And so you drink some. So in the case of this, your signal is the pain or the or the OCD, the nervousness, or the seizure that you're trying to stop. So what you're saying is, is take a look at where I am right now. How do I feel on a, let's use a scale of one to 10 for obsessing on something or- For hurting. Hurting or excited or pain. And I say, okay, it's a two or it's a 10 or it's a whatever it is. And then I take five drops and I go, Okay. An hour, an hour later, mm, I'm okay. a little bit. Okay, so this stuff comes in different concentrations. This bottle is about 15 milliliters, and in it is 100 milligrams of the CBD. Okay. This box 
is a 10 milliliter, but it has 1,500 milligrams of the active ingredient, which is 15 times as much as that. Okay. So one drop of that, pardon me, one drop of that equals 15 drops of that. Anyway, so you take, say, five drops, and you wait. Within two minutes, this thing is in your system and is doing its thing. So, yeah, so then, so this is basically, uh, is it physician know thyself? Or <laughs> is that the famous term? <laughs> it's like well, know yourself, right? Yeah, you need to know yourself. You need to be able to say, so what comes to mind is, can I overdose on this? Uh, the you'll go to sleep. Okay. So if I have to, so if I take that whole bottle and just douse myself with it, I'm just the worst that's going to happen is I'm going to go lay in the couch and have a snooze. Yeah, you will be wasting money by taking too much because it, you will metabolize it and uh, you won't heal in one day. Right. Yeah. No, it takes. It definitely takes time. But you get better over time because as it helps the body to cope with stuff whatever stuff is, the irritants, uh, you will do better. Now, okay, so let's just talk chronic pain, discomfort. I don't want to use the word illness because I don't think of it as a disease. Uh, you know, so it's I like have... Breathing. It's like breathing, right? So I have a lifestyle, and the result of the lifestyle after... 20, 30, 50 years, 60 years, however old I am, is I am in pain all over my body. So now you're saying, great, I have this hemp oil. I start taking the hemp oil. The pain goes down. But I haven't made any change to my lifestyle. So then it's like, okay, my pain is gone. I put the hemp oil away. And what's probably going to happen in a week? Well, you'll be right back where you started. Okay. We were talking about the little hammer. And um, so if you're living the lifestyle that got you in pain and make no changes, you're continuing to create these micro injuries. I'm talking always about triggers and thresholds. Thresholds is how much of it can you take. Trigger is how hard it's coming on you. At some point, the threshold is broken with a trigger and you flare. And the flare is the uh, mast cell that is sending out the histamine into the system. It's sort of like you have seen these uh, uh, illustrations. Well, illustrations of what it looks like when a plant releases pollen into the mm, air. Right. So it all just goes out. Slow mo, when it flies. And then it goes throughout the system, right? Yes. And you have a lot of these little flowers called mast cells, and they are really good at pushing out the histamine. And so, poof, 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 fireworks, explosions. Ergo pain. Pain. So if you can figure out how you are going to either increase your threshold, make more room in your safe zone, or lower the triggers, you will be less and less in the flare. So what? So what's necessary at this point is to look at how much sleep do I get? How much water do I drink? How many organic fruits and vegetables do I eat? How much beautiful processed factory made food do I eat? <laughs> like less and less, please. And so, and then how much exercise do I get? And if I'm not getting enough exercise, I'm not getting enough water, I'm not getting enough proper nutrition, uh, and not getting enough re rest and sleep and recovery. I mean, I'll get along, right? You know, half the time when you see a picture of the lion in Africa, he's snoozing or he's just sort of sitting there like, you know, he's not running around after something all the time. He does it once maybe or twice a day or every couple of days and he's good. And yet we live a lifestyle where we're running around constantly. And we've got these little square things that are usually black that are beeping at us and interrupting us constantly. So we get no time to really sit back and relax, no time to digest our food, no time to actually, you know, think about 
what should I be eating? And okay, so there are there are a whole bunch of concepts that you threw in that all of them totally valid, right? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, digest our food. There are two sides to the autonomic nervous system. Think of it like a seesaw. You're either in sympathetic or parasympathetic. The sympathetic says fight or flight. The parasympathetic says rest, repair, and digest. This one says high blood pressure. This one says lower blood pressure. This one says uh, no digestion. This one says real digestion. So if you're overly buzzed sympathetic, you're excited, you get stuff accomplished, stuff done, and so on, but you are not digesting your food and you're not repairing the micro injuries that you have made. So it's really important to sleep. Guess what? One of the problems associated with the fibromyalgia is insomnia. People are not falling asleep and they're waking too early and they have restless sleep and especially don't have a lot of REM sleep. So the repairs are not happening. So all there is an injury, no repair, injury, no repair. Before long, it's you're just worn in a horrible way. So it's kind of like the car engine that never got any oil or got very little oil, and it's running hot and it's wearing out faster than it should be. Yes, because it's not it's not getting the proper nutrition, it's not getting the proper rest, it's not getting proper no care. Yeah, no downtime, no maintenance. So that's uh, so I, I said sympathetic, parasympathetic. So when I kick off the sympathetic, lower it, the parasympathetic rises and repairs happen. Um, this one's triggered by calcium, this one's triggered by magnesium. So it's good to push magnesium because it enables you to have a nice restful time. So if you're... I was going to say, and we know that if you take a whole bunch of uh, I was going to say magnesium rocks, but magnesium supplements and try to eat them, what will happen is, is you'll just be flushing. I don't know if flushing out your system is right, but basically it's going to go right through you. That's not the best okay. way to do well, it. To explain, parasympathetic is the modality of your digestive system. When you're parasympathetic, you're digesting and you're getting the food through the system really quickly. Well, that's what it'll do. It'll absolutely accelerate it. So instead of having something formed, you're going to have something really watery coming out of the back end. Right. And you're not necessarily going to be absorbing a lot of magnesium. Mm -mm. No, no, it goes through. It goes through. So magnesium salts are phenomenal in a hot bath, which, of course, if you're on the sympathetic side and hyper and everything else, the last thing you're going to want to do is sit in a tub of water for 20 minutes. But if you do that, boy, do you ever feel relaxed. Right. So there are other things you can do for acti activating the parasympathetic. Green foods, chlorophyll, chlorella, spirulina, dark green things of every sort, barley grass, wheat grass, alfalfa, leaf juice, the superfood things we make, like the oracil yeah. or advancium, those all will act as activators of your parasympathetic, improving your ability to rest, repair, and digest. Right. So the point that I was trying to make was, or I hope I did make, was if you're going and taking the hemp oil and everything else and you feel better, that is not a ticket or a license to go and party all night and eat pizzas and, and uh, you know, eat cardboard. I was going to say pizzas, you know, like you need to sit down and take a look at your whole lifestyle and say, you know, where this has got me to where I am. Where I am is not where I want to be. The hemp oil has given me kind of a break from the damage that I have done to my my society, however you want to say it. And so now we need to change. And then you need to start changing it. This is why we did the seven day challenge was so that, you know, every day, take out one food, whether it's wheat or it's dairy or what, what sugar, salt, whatever it was, and then see how you feel. And now one day isn't enough. Like you need to have it out of your system for three or four days to really get the effect. But we're confident, particularly with people that are severely 
hurt that you can uh, y- you can see a difference in in just one day. And if you see that difference, then it's kind of like okay, now you have a little self awareness on something you didn't before. And once the seven day challenge is out, go back to that thing that you noticed that made a difference and stop it for three days or four days or a week or forever. Like I hardly have any dairy in my, particularly compared to when I was a teenager in my diet now. And I'm abs- and so for me, when I grew up, I couldn't breathe through my nose. It was like plugged solid. I had no clue why. And then all of a sudden, I moved to a different city and for whatever reason, stopped drinking milk. And it's like, it feels really nice breathing through my nose. Yeah, and it wasn't the city. It wasn't the move. It was the milk. It was the milk, right? And, yeah. you know, and so, and of course, since then, I've heard stories of people say, yeah, like I've had a glass of milk in this area of the world. I have this terrible reaction. But if I go to this other place and have the milk there, I don't. So there's, you know, it's, is it the milk? Is it stuff that the cows are eating? Who knows, right? Oh, well, we could get into the details, but I want to say this. In your digestive system, in your small intestine, you have villi. And the villi are sort of like the protrusions, like fingers, that are sticking out from the wall of the um, gut itself, to the inside of it. And they are supposed to be th- thick enough or close enough so that the gaps between them do not allow things that are not fully digested to pass through. And on top of it, they're covered by a single cell layer. It's like tissue paper covering it. So when you have a micro injury, which causes the gap to open and something called gluten goes through it, zonulin, all of a sudden it goes through, bang, into the, into the safe side it causes a problem. And it happened because there was a hole in that one single molecule layer of the tissue paper that's protecting you from this happening. So when you're young and have your immune system in good order and there's a lot of uh, repair power in you, this layer will heal itself overnight. So you could eat pizza And then by morning, you're repaired enough that you're not leaking throughout. But there comes a time when this repair capacity is diminished. Like you can see it on me. I can no longer eat many things. And uh, just the other day, I ate some kind of a coconut something, something that. And I have a flare that lasts three or four days. And then it kind of calms Mm -hmm. down. And uh, I say, okay, that was a mistake. Don't do that. Right. (laughs) Anyway, so while we're young, we have the repair ability intact. And as as we wear out, that that repair ability is diminished. And for some people, it's diminished at 28, at some people at 38, some people at whatever. It takes some kind of a liminal event, some kind of a big kick that's going to cause this to cave in. And unfortunately, women have a lot more of these events predetermined in their life. The puberty is a major assault. Pregnancies are a major assault. Uh, Menopause is another major restructuring of how things are. And of course, you have the medical interventions like hysterectomies and uh, I don't know what else procedures that, that will... Well, they have to put up with guys... Well, I suppose, yeah. But anyway, what I'm saying is that this, these are already predetermined that they're going to happen, and they are traumatic events. And then you have the other traumatic events, like a car accident. So, or, or just life, the things that well, happen yeah, in the, life. The life. Like your coworkers, your your boss, your job, your relationships. Okay. Your... That those are. So I have the emotional trauma that will weigh on you, and the physical trauma, and interestingly enough, and you know it, anything that's imagined is actually as real to the physiology as if it were happening. Like I can Mm -hmm. close my eyes and vividly imagine a a very stressful situation and I will have all the symptoms of the stressfulness upon me. Like going to watch a horror movie is going to have me 
experience a full-on adrenaline release and I'm going to suffer for it. Okay. All right. So I think we've answered most of the questions except for one. And what I'd like to do for the next little while is take a few minutes and just kind of go through some of the hemp oil manufacturers that are available on Remar Remarkable Recovery. That's, that sounds good to you. You're getting applause from a person called Ko'opake. I don't know if that's Hawaiian or what. I'd love to figure out how to pronounce it. Right. Uh, so let's, why don't we talk about um, the Endoka first? Sure. All right, sure, let's have it. So the Endoka is uh, from Denmark. And um, it's, uh, you know, you start with hemp plants growing in Denmark, then you harvest them, then you extract from them using the carbon dioxide supercritical method of extracting the alkaloids, the, uh, the important stuff that we need. And when you have it concentrated, after that, you can mix it into something. In this case, it's mixed into hemp oil. Would that be hemp seed oil? Yes. I can't read it. I need better glasses or bigger bottles. Huh. Yep, hemp seed oil. Hemp seed oil with hemp plant body oil extract added back in. Okay. Okay. So this will taste like salad oil. All right. So we've got uh, raw hemp and we've got cooked hemp, right. I believe. And so there, there, is, there is difference in absorption rates. The raw doesn't have as much activity, but it's much nicer for people, especially who are dealing with chemical damage, like people with, on chemo with cancer. They will have a lot easier time dealing with the raw rather than the cooked. Okay. And so the raw of endoka isn't all raw. It's mix, about 50-50 of raw and cooked. So there's some of the activated and some of this not yet activated. It's called decarboxylation. And when you heat it, it turns from the inactive into the active form. What's the difference between an inactive or active form of hemp? Well, I guess chemically it's irrelevant, but like you can juice a pound of raw hemp and drink it and not feel very stoned. And if you take that same hemp and bake it into a cookie you'll and eat it then, you'll be stoned out of your mind because you have activated the, um, the chemicals with heat. So or did you just say that if you take this, you're going to get stoned? Not this, the hemp. You're talking about the marijuana. The full-bodied. So for so I'm just trying to get clear in my mind what the CBD when it's activated is different than when it's not activated. Yes, it's different. So is it more effective, less effective? Does it depend on your situation? People with a challenged immune system do better on the raw or than on the activated. That's why they are making it this way. Okay. So what they found is that certain, so when you're taking the hemp oil, you may want to try three or four different types to see which one, like try one. Sure. And then after that's gone, try a different one and then a different one sure. to see what works for you. Because mm -hmm. they are different, right? Yes. So let's go on to a dose so of before you run off, So we have this available in oil drops, in paste and in capsules. Okay. Okay. So, so nature, yeah. Dose of nature. So they also have my products available in either glycerin base or in oil base. And in oil, actually, some people are allergic to seed oils, such as the hemp seed oil. So we have it available in olive oil, which is a fruit oil, because you're not make the olive oil is made from the outside of the fruit rather than the seed. So most people who no. may be allergic to flaxseed or hemp seed or whatever seed oil are probably not allergic to olive oil. 
Okay. So we have it in olive oil or we have it in glycerin. And I was demonstrating the glycerin a little earlier. Glycerin is another solvent in which the cannabidiol can be dissolved. And uh, it's really sweet tasting, sickly sweet, I would say. The advantage of that is that it's vapable. So if you're mm, into okay. smoking things, you can use glycerin-based products and heat them, evaporate them, turn them into steam and inhale them. And you're going to get high, No, right? no, no, no. If there's CBD only, that's you just get the same. You can't get high on CBD. Right. And so the, the main difference is this. When you smoke it, take it through the lungs, it hits your bloodstream instantly. Ten seconds and you feel it. When you take it through the mouth, it takes two to three minutes. When you take it and swallow it quick, goes into your stomach, it takes probably half an hour. So if you're taking capsules or paste or whatever, by swallowing it, it takes longer to come up. But it's still it takes longer, but it's not no less effective. Correct. Okay, cool. So is there anything about Dose of Nature that you want to add before we move on to the next one? one? Other product, that, which is uh, dissolved in just water. And, uh, oh. That's the special technology. They have some really fancy way of creating liposomal connection with water, which especially for highly allergic people, it's probably the way to go. Mm, okay. Well, let's move on to uh, Dixie Botanicals. They have a hemp line as yeah. well. It gets kind of similar. There are glycerin-based and there are capsules and there are creams. There's two things about Dixie that I like. One is you can get cinnamon flavor or peppermint flavor. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a problem with it, and sometimes, like obviously I've tried most of these brands, some of the brands are a little harder to take in terms of taste if you've got a sensitive palate like I do, and some of them are easier. So if that's the case with you, then a cinnamon or peppermint is really kind of nice. I really like the hemp oil salvation balm, and it's just like the little oil, you take it and you put it wherever you want to put it. And I've put it on a few places where I thought, like I had a cut, for example, and um, also had a something kind of dry, patchy problem skin. And before I did that, I was putting coconut oil on it and a couple other moisturizers and nothing really seemed to affect it. And then I put the, the hemp oil on and was like, wow, this made made a difference. And that's uh, how one of the reasons why I'm so excited about these products is I really see them as having made a difference. And they also have a capsule. So if you don't want to have anything to do with taste, you can just pop the capsule, drink some water, and down she goes. Yep. Okay. And that's the Dixie line. And Canavest. Same sounding stuff. Liquids, capsules, uh, lotion. Oh, they have an oil, a balm too. I didn't know yeah. that. Uh, one other thing they have is little dabs. We have both green, which is uncooked, and gold, which is cooked and filtered. And the, that's also is available in a syringe, which is about a finger size syringe with a plunger that you push on and it yep. squeezes out. Just push it on. Take squeezes it. Squeezes out something that looks like uh, a teeny little toothpaste. Yeah. Except it's green or gray or black, yeah. depending but on. But anyway, so the point of that is this. The, the paste is you can either put it in the mouth, chew on it, and you allow it to absorb, or you can put it on your body. Like you just put a piece of it here, and you can use coconut oil, for instance, to drive it in. So if you have mm. lesions, especially skin cancer or that sort of concern, you can do a really high dose of the hemp material by using the concentrated paste. Interesting. And so, so, so medical marijuana puffing on pot is not the only way that you can get some relief from some of these scourges of today's society. Right. I have to say too that Canavest is my favorite, which <laughs> which may mean it doesn't work as well as all the others. It's just it's the one I like the most because I, I just squirt a couple under my tongue, let it sit there for a while, and then I swallow whatever's yeah. left, and I really okay. You know, it's just doesn't mean it's 
the best for anybody else, but it's just the one that I like the sure, best. Sure, they're good. Yeah, followed uh, very closely by Brown's Botanicals. Right, that's our in-house brand. We have uh, two versions of it. The one is in plain hemp oil. The other one is hemp together with uh, black cumin and uh, frankincense. That sounds interesting. Both of those are high intensity oils that reverse illness or support health, I should say, which means that especially people with significant health conditions will get quicker help from the uh, frankincense and the black cumin seed as well. Black cumin is really big, isn't it? Yes. The unfortunate part of black cumin is it tastes like, like a motor oil. Not fun taste for me. I actually haven't tried that one. I'll have to give it a whirl. All right, so let's move on to garden. Green Garden Gold. Yeah, so the Green Garden guys are especially big into the smokables, vapables. So we have seven different flavors. We have it in apple, strawberry, blueberry, cinnamon, mint. So you can breathe it in easy. Right. Well, so it's it's actually flavored with real fruit. These are oh. fruit concentrates made from nature, not some kind of a simulated lemon or whatever. This is the real actual blueberry that's been dried, concentrated, juiced out and put into this thing. And it's smokable. So when you inhale it, it tastes like blueberry. And Or if you don't smoke it, if you just put it in your mouth, then it uh, tastes like the fruit. Anyway, so they have that. They have a lotion as well. And um, it's in three strengths. A bottle like this with either 100, 300, or 500 milligrams, which makes it one drop, three drop, five drop equivalent, right? Yes. So depending on how much you need. Right. And then they also have food items, spreads. I have a chocolate spread, grapes, grape jelly, and strawberry jam. And a little, some honey left. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't there honey yeah, too? Honey. And anyway, so those things, you can actually eat them. You can put chocolate spread hemp. A teaspoon of it gives you 16 milligrams, which is a significant dose. So you can have it in morning in the morning with your toast. Oh, yeah. Except you can't eat uh, wheat. <laughs> Yeah, except you can't eat the wheat, you can't eat the toast, <laughs> can lick it off. Uh, yeah, but so what about my pets? What if I've got a, a dog that is, you know, oh, having a little these guys make biscuits? Oh, okay, dog biscuits. What I can't doggy be uh, good CBD yeah, treats. CBD treats. What I cannot believe is that they actually make them from wheat. Oh, <laughs> but they work, they work great. Okay, so. Uh, you can give your dog a biscuit. If you have gluten allergy, don't eat it yourself. I've I've tested it, tasted it. It tastes fine. It's a bacon flavored dog treat. It's oh, so, a treat. So yeah, the dog will love it. Tastes it. Me. it tastes good to me too. And there's <laughs> nothing in it that I wouldn't eat. All right. So what about pharma CBD oil? Uh, it's a line that we're discontinuing. All right. So we won't talk about that. Nothing wrong, with them. You want to get Nothing wrong with them. I just don't think that we need to have yet another line that has drops, pills, capsules, and uh, whatever. It's just the same right. thing. Uh, hemp meds. Right, and RSHO. So they are one of the biggest companies with really solid financial backing and uh, really solid companies. RSHO, Real Scientific Hemp Oil. They, they were one of the Great first name. companies in. They are doing a fine job of it. And uh, it's available, again, in capsules. And we have three different capsules, green, blue, and gold. Not that it makes a lot of difference, but you can have your choice. We have the oil drops, also green, blue, and gold. And we have syringes in blue and gold. So what's it? So when it's a syringe, that's just like the paste as opposed to an oil, yeah. right? So is it more? There's more of it in a syringe than it would be in the in the droppers. Well, or? the serving size is uh, something about the size of a seed of rice or grain of rice. Oh, if with the paste, with the paste, yeah. Okay, so 
you could take an awful lot of it really fast if you needed to. Oh, yeah. Because that's one of the things, too, that I, I want to kind of – That's so that's all of our products, I think. If you're in a lot of pain, like one of the things we've talked about often, often in the past is um, – and now I can't remember the term that you use, like the dose. It's like a take it. And t- you, I, in fact, the first time you told me this, I didn't have, a, did not register at all. What the you word meant. is titration or titration. Yeah, no, well, I don't know about that word either. But it was like take enough that you could feel yes. it, right? And particularly when we talk about enzymes, I say like, how much should I take? Well, I'll take it till you. I hate to use the word buzz given the conversation that we're having right now, but take it till you really feel it. I was like, oh, well, you know, I take, it says three, I'm taking three or four and then, okay, I'll do it twice and nothing. And then, then it finally hit me. It's just like, take a bunch and see until you can really see what happens. So I took a handful of these enzymes and it was like, it was like you could feel all these little construction guys running around repairing the building. You know, it was just like amazing. Whoa, like this is, I can feel myself, you know, getting better and, and, uh, Fix stuff getting fixed on a cellular level. I think I don't know. Yes, it is like probably that. was just when uh, you know, yeah. When you're being repaired, there is a feeling of wellness that overcomes you. Like yeah, I can only liken it to feeling like you're 20 again. <laughs> How fun was that? That would be. You were so stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So, and I forget why I even brought that up now, but it, so yeah. So when you get back to getting the hemp, like let's, so someone who's in a lot of pain, get something that's concentrated, start off slowly, right? Because you, your body is going to, you could, I'm not saying you could react, but I think you don't want to, if you can't swim, you don't jump into the deep end of the pool. You start in the shallow end and you get kind of acclimatized. And then as you get deeper and deeper, you kind of figure out how to swim. That's the way I look at it. So, But you get something that's really concentrated. You start taking a little bit and a little bit and a little bit so that you're comfortable with it. And then you keep adding more and more and more until you get to that point where you say, wow, like I can really feel this kicking in. And and again, it's back to that self-administrating. Like nobody knows your body but you, really. Yeah. You know, we we know the doctors have no clue. They're just experimenting on you with this drug and that drug and some other drug. And they're hoping they got their fingers crossed that you'll go away and not come back. So you have to be able to be the one responsible and say, okay, you know, I need to make sure I get lots of enzymes. That's what's what I've noticed for me is taking these, uh, the platinum plus enzymes and um, the you take cholesterol in quantity. That was uh, the one, the one, the cholesterol. Taking those two has really made a big difference. And the fibrenza with the absorb yeah, right. you know, yeah, so, those work great too. You know, so I've got a combination of three different types and I don't take them all all the time. I, I kind of flip back and forth. And because I'm listening to my body, I look at it and my body goes, no, oh, no, I don't need that today. That one looks good, you know. And then you add in the the because the the enzymes are causing you to um well what do enzymes do, Martin? Well, okay, so we're getting off topic here, but all right. Enzymes are the activators. A protein can be either closed or opened, Uh, inactivated, activated. Each thing in your body has to either activate or not. When it's activated, it's in doing business. And when it's not activated, it's not doing business. Enzymes are the triggers that cause it. They're like the spark plugs that when you fire a spark plug in your cylinder under pressure, stuff happens right so when you're young do you have lots of enzymes or no lots when you're older you have lots by about 26 27 your original enzyme uh, supply has run out right so in other words you're growing remember you have the most enzymes when you're fresh like when you're fresh sprouted like a sprouted seed has loads of enzymes in it and that's why Wheat grass, barley grass, and other sprouted foods are so healthy. Anyway, you're a child. Your growth curve is pretty steep. Actually, I should show it this way. So as you're going up, it, the, the growth curve slows down. Yeah, as By you about 24, you're finished growing. That's it. You're now an adult. And two or three years later, 
your supply is exhausted and it's downhill from there. Right. And you can get enzymes from all sorts of cooked foods. You boil that potato and it's full of enzymes, right? No. 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 In other words, all the cooked food we eat has zero right. enzymes. You okay? Enzymes so, are inactivated at about 140 degrees. Then they're killed. 140 okay. Fahrenheit, which is about 45 or something, maybe 50 Celsius. You boil something, you've killed it. Pasteurization, it kills it. So all the food that you eat processed, all the food that you eat that's cooked, there's zero enzymes. So how many carrots do you have a day? How many apples do you have a day? How many oranges do you have a day? You would need to eat an awful lot of that to make up for the fact that you are using up all these enzymes or have used up all these enzymes and you need to replace right. them. So supplementation is one way you can do it. Juicing, of course, is another way. I like to eat sprouts. Um, actually, it's garlic sprouts right now that I put in my sandwiches. And it's great. So you need to find ways to eat living food to get the enzymes. And if you don't have the enzymes, then you've got all the stuff that's supposed to be going on that's not going on. And then, and that's part of the repair process, which is why I brought this all up. You've got the, you got the hemp oil that's going to drop everything down so that you can deal with everything. And then you've got to work, and it will help with the repairs, but then you've got to add these enzymes back in to keep it going, which could come from supplementation and it could come from eating organic fruits and vegetables. But also superfood blends. Superfood blends. In our yes. side of the business where you can get a teaspoon of a green powder that has been freeze dried, preserved, all of the goodness in it. It's like raw bomb that you toss into a glass of something, you drink it, and you give yourself a massive kick for the better. That's right. Hmm. So there you go. Hemp oil, enzymes, uh, they're not magic pills, but they'll help you get on the way to where you want to get. Right. So where were we? Okay. We were hmm. on trying to explain the product lines, and we tried to explain what's to take it with, I got lost in the conversation. Well, no, we were where to get it, which of course is remarkablerecovery.com. And, um, okay, and so there's a point to be made. It comes with a customer satisfaction guarantee. This okay. is not a common thing in the industry. It's certainly not common in your doctor's office. I don't know when you bought yourself a bottle of something and, and then you came back and said, I don't think it worked for me. Can I have my money back? not going to happen in your doctor's office. We do it and we stand behind it. And the products that we have put on the website are checked by an analytical processes. We actually know that what we say is in them is in them. We have worked with these manufacturers to be sure that we can reliably put our business tush on the line. Right. So it's not a uh, faceless creation by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so we've come kind of to the end of uh, today's episode. Martin, if somebody wanted to know more about hemp oil, more about enzymes, more about superfoods, uh, can they get a hold of you? Of course they can. And where do they so do that? So read on remarkablerecovery.com, watch the videos. We have carefully selected worthy pieces of content, not just some random stuff. And uh, if that's not filling your cup, call us 1-866-543-3388. Wonderful. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we really appreciate you. We really appreciate your feedback. This has been the Life Enthusiast Online Radio, TV, and Blab Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.